Welcome to this Skillic Explains video and welcome to video three in my uh, pensions basic series, if you like. And this time I want to consider when you get to the point where you want to actually draw down from a pension fund that you've spent a lot of time and effort building up, what is the best route? An annuity or some kind of drawdown option? Or could you blend the two? And I would say that um, as background to this, your choice on reaching the minimum qualifying age for a private pension, such as a self-invested personal pension of 55, is essentially that. You can take out, regardless, up to 25% of the old lifetime allowance, just over a million pounds, as tax-free cash. But then the question becomes, what do you do with the rest? Do you put it into an annuity with a life assurance company, or do you manage it yourself and draw down an income? Or do you blend the two? And whilst Drawdown has many benefits, which I'll cover in a moment. With interest rates rising, annuities also have their place. Um, so let's cover both options. So first of all, the difference between drawdown and annuity essentially comes down a little bit to your attitude to risk. Uh, really, the way it works is if you were to take the money you have from a pension, hand it over to a life insurance company, and ask them to pay you an income, an annuity in return, basically, you are outsourcing the risk and the potential rewards to somebody else. Because what I mean by that is if the fund goes down in value once you've outsourced it, that's the annuity company's problem. Equally, if it goes up in value, because you're talking about handing over something that could be invested, then they get the benefit. All they're doing is paying you an agreed stream of income over a defined period or in perpetuity. If, on the other hand, you're prepared to bear the risk, then the drawdown route can work quite well because this time what you're doing is saying, well, I'll take my tax-free 25%, I can have that anyway. And with the rest, I'm gonna leave it managed, I'm gonna leave it invested, such that if it goes down, well, that is my problem. But if it goes up, and I'm thinking about passing it on to future generations, for example, well, happy days. Now, let's go back to some annuity basics, and then we'll do drawdown second. So what is an annuity? Basically, what you're doing, as I suggested before, is taking a lump of capital from a pension that you've built up, for example, and handing it over for income from an insurance company. And you can shop around. Uh, annuity rates, as they're called, do vary. And that's just a flash way of saying the amount of income they'll pay you annually varies. They're in competition, after all. But it gives you certainty and it gives you simplicity. So for people who want a really easy life, not necessarily the best deal, but an easy life, an annuity might be at least part of the solution. One of the big problems is they're not inheritable. I'll come back to that in just a moment. Whereas an untapped pot in drawdown potentially is. So if you're looking for an annuity as either part or whole of the solution, what are some of the factors to weigh up? Um, they include, are you looking for a fixed term annuity or something that's indefinite? That will change the price of it, if you like, the cost of it. Are you looking for it to apply to a single or joint life? In other words, is this going to attach just to you? Or do you want it in some way to cover a spouse? Maybe 50% of it goes to them, them in the event of your death and so on. Is there going to be a minimum guarantee period during which the annuity pays out regardless of what happens to you? Is the annuity stream going to be level? Is it going to be indexed? And is it going to be indexed at a flat rate, say 3% per year, or the rate of inflation? That's quite important. And what are overall annuity rates doing? Now, as I make this video in the summer of 2023, interest rates are rising, gilt yields are rising, so annuity rates are rising, but that's worth keeping an eye on. Now, the alternative for those people prepared to do a bit more work and take on a bit more risk is the drawdown route. And this is leaving the fund, if you like, essentially invested, say, in a, in a portfolio of equities, after all, uh, life after work can last 20 or 30 years in some cases, People might want to pass these pots on and then dipping in as you need to to fund the fact you don't have an income from working or running a business, for example. And what people tend to do is they apply a rate. Now, lots of textbooks will talk about a 4% drawdown rate, but that's not gospel. You need to decide the annual rate you need to draw down at based on your lifestyle, based on various factors and so on. You are still exposed to the market. So the pot can grow in size or shrink in size. It is market exposed, all right? But this can be a benefit. I mean, as I say, things go up as well as down. And the remaining fund, importantly, is still inheritable. Now, there are one or two income tax implications, 
that I mentioned in the last video, but it is fundamentally outside of the debt estate for inheritance tax purposes. So, things to think about here, what drawdown rate will work for me? And there's quite a lot of art and science in the answer to that question. Am I happy to deal with the slightly, you know, the complications that come with doing drawdown? Or would I like to outsource that to someone who can manage that process for me? Um, and essentially takeaways from this video are when it comes to drawdown versus annuity, there isn't a right answer, I'm afraid. I can't just tell you the answer is going to be right for you. You can blend the two. There's such an important decision for most people, there's some kind of conversation. Ideally, before you get to the point where you have to make the decision is usually beneficial. Now, to find out more about that topic, lots of jargon covered there. There are other videos, killit.com forward slash learn on the tax effective savings tab. There are two guides, not the one sitting next to me, but there are two guides around the whole issue of building a fund for life after work and generating income from it, which is what I'm talking about here. It's a gray cover guide, it's quite meaty. That is editor at killit.com for a copy. And then in Confidant, our quarterly magazine, there are also quite often conversations around the latest pensions rules and annuities versus drawdown and strategizing over life after work. And for a copy of that, again, editor at killick.com.